Okay, here we are in the bathroom. To get some light, I guess, because we're front lit pretty badly here. Um, hang on. Here's our vanity. Got the drawers out. Uh, and it's in position. Trim the baseboard. We talked about how that's just some thin crap stuck on the wall to look like baseboard, which follows the current trend in here, so forgive that, but trim the baseboard in this location and in this location so that this can be installed uh, truly tight to the wall eventually when it gets screwed to the wall. And that was all based on this center line that we gave this whole arrangement, the light, the faucet, everything has this center line. Um, I dropped it in here as well. I guess we can see that with automatic uh, uh, exposure. And then I made a, a half, a, mi a middle point. This is a 32 inch wide cabinet, so I put a 16 inch mark here, and they're lined up. Uh, this is a 16 inch diameter vessel sink. I believe the center is justified a little bit to the back. But I laid it out here. I got the cabinet as close and as tight to the wall as I think I can get it for the time being. Just as a mock-up, I put a, I drew that center line on the, maybe you can see it there. So we're gonna shoot for that here and just see where that puts us. That's like, a, that should put the sink off the wall about a half an inch, which it basically is to a certain extent there. Um, now, I think because the wall is a rough texture, this isn't finished, it's gonna be feathered out like that, but it will be rough. Um, and it's gonna wander a little bit here and the propensity for moisture to go down, uh, I'm gonna probably add a backsplash section. Piece of wood matched in color to this, maybe three or four inches tall, and it's gonna go through here. So I wanna be sure that I have the room to do that. It looks like I just have the room for that. Um, however, this is a little tight to wash that with a hand towel in case you got a toothpaste or some soap scum or whatever there. So all in all, given that, and this situation, this is the P-trap. And this has got a, the trap's gonna go into that sink and this has gotta go in like this, obviously, in the center of the cabinet here. And it has to penetrate the wall this way. And then it's gonna roll into an elbow and go down. And this is the tightest arrangement I can make. This is a short radius elbow. So the distance from the face of it to the center line of it is, is it doesn't get any smaller than that for this diameter. And then I have a, uh, the transition from socket weld PVC to threaded, which accepts the gasketed connection from the trap. And that uh, is a uh, male style, or like a, a blind, or uh, what's the word I want? Um, street, it goes right in here, rather than the other style that I had originally, let me show you, the other style I had originally required a short piece of pipe out of this socket weld, and then the end of that piece had a, had a female socket on it, so you would stack it up that way, and you would gain, like it was an, about an inch longer than this setup. So this omits a piece of pipe, because the end of this component fits right into there. So that shortens our face to center as much as we possibly can. Because we haven't got a conventionally framed wall, it has a stud, if you want to call it that, in there, flat ways, and boards on both sides. It's an old style interior wall, like a plank wall it's called. Um, so I haven't got a lot of depth there. So I, ha I want to come up inside the wall with my drop, my vertical, and I want to roll out, and I don't want to add any distance to me if I can help it, because I've already got a significant distance in this leg of the P-trap. Now what difference does that make? That means that as, it, as I have to keep this drain centered on that sink, so I have to actually go in the wall with this guy, or my options are to turn the P to 90 degrees and move to the side, and then I lose the, the length of that, I lose the length of this full bend by turning it to 90, and who cares, I move over a little bit. The only issue with that, then I can get there no problem, I have no space issues. The issue becomes, when I get into the cabinet, I wanna go through the top of this cabinet with my tailpiece, and I wanna go straight through this section in the middle right here. 
straight down through there. I want to get underneath here before I do any trap business. And I'm looking at this now. I'm stacking it up at the edge here. And I, you can see that I'm not going to get below it. So uh, that would mean that this run of the trap would completely interrupt this drawer when it's in all the way so the drawer would have to be modified which is what you see in a functional drawer in a in a cabinet a sink face cabinet or a vanity cabinet you'll see that notched out drawer I was hoping to stay in the middle here I, it looks like rather than just a circle I would have to take a cut all the way out to the back and my exit would be in the middle up there and below um, of this piece I think that that's better I think it would be worth doing it's easy enough to do I'll just get my hole drilled through the top and get my hole drilled, drilled through here and then I'll basically come tangent off that hole and go straight back on both sides and make a big notch and uh, then put a hole in the back of the cabinet from the outside I'll get it away from the wall and drill in from the back and they'll just be like a build, big pill shaped notch all the way back to the exit in the back and I think the idea being both drawers can stay completely intact and that trap will exist in this space between them. That's the idea. Uh, that still means that this is too long when we straighten this back out. So I'll have to cut this trap um, back. The issue with that is that the whole thing has been chrome dipped. So the edge of it is also chrome dipped and the inside is, you know, everything went underwater. I had a light problem here, but the inside is chrome as well. So it's encapsulated with a chrome coating. When I cut it, it'll leave a raw end and the potential for acid, acidic, or ba even basic soapy waters, spit water, just the ordinary tap water um, to start working on that metal trap prematurely, earlier than it would if it had to eat through the chrome to begin with. A lot of people go with uh, plastic this whole setup well then so long as it's sealed up well it'll last forever however uh, in an old vintage cabinet like this it just seems like it looks nicer when it's all chrome so we'll put that in and let it fail once and then when I'm in here pulling my hair out replacing it I'll probably flip my lid and put all plastic in or by then maybe this bathroom won't exist anymore so we'll see anyway we're going this route so I'll have to cut this tail back or there's one more option I can get maybe a tailpiece extender because this tailpiece is about as far out of there as I can get and it doesn't quite get the swing low enough to get this in all underneath this plane. So since this is about at the end of it, where is the last, that's like, that's the last place that the seal might work on it and it won't quite get as far enough down. However, I might be able to get a tailpiece extension. Let me get this right out of here. Get a tailpiece extension that would add, oh yeah, that would give me two or three inches, maybe four. And then I would get just a, through a hole here and the whole trap could exist below and then I wouldn't need a notch. It would go back there and out the back of its own cord. Um, so I'm going to go quickly shop and make sure I can't get a, a drop tube in chrome or an extension in, in chrome for the, for the tailpiece. And then I'm going to make a decision here and it'll start with probably drilling through this piece of furniture and out the back once I've made my decision and then starting there and taking off to go. So just wanted to give people an idea of how many considerations there are before you do any cutting. Just a lot of measuring and checking and rechecking and stacking and um, mocking things up. In fact, in industry, when I would, if I were working, I would do this in CAD. I'd have a model from these manufacturers and I'd put it all together and just check the clearances. But we're going to do this IRL. All right, check it out when I figure it out.